Hey, what's up guys, Dr. M3 here, and guess what? I am still in the hunt for my next daily driver, and the newest candidate is the car behind me, the Tesla Model X. That's the big daddy of them all. Actually, I guess it's the big daddy until we get the Cybertruck, uh, and then the trailer, I guess. But for right now, uh, I'm gonna take a quick look at the Tesla Model X now. Uh, many of you guys have uh, seen this car on the road. It has an incredible presence for sure. Um, but the question is, is this the right car for me? And again, I wanted something more practical. You guys have followed me for a while. If you're new to the channel, however, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, turn notification on, and you'll know that I have the BMW i8. It's been my daily driver now since 2014. It was one of the earliest cars, earliest i8s in the United States, and it's been an awful lot of fun. I am actually going to keep that car, but now I'm looking at replacing it. And the question is, is the Model X the right car, or SUV for that matter, to be my daily driver. And so that's really what this series is about, is trying to help me find out what is the right one. And I'm thinking that I do want to do a, an electric car, potentially. Uh, if you follow this series, you've seen me talk about the RS6 Avant, which was going to be my next daily driver. However, because I want to do it in a very specific way with Audi exclusive, and they can't really deliver that just yet, um, and my commute now is going to jump to 150 miles a day, and I didn't want to really do that to the BMW i8. I guess now I'm looking at the Model X. And so if you are an owner of the Model X, tell me why this is the right car. Practicality, I want something that's practical that I can put things in, move uh, items, although I'm not moving a ton. I don't have a family, a huge family, that, so it's not like I have to haul a wife and three kids. Um, and this car is actually quite substantive. I'm calling it a car, but it's an SUV. Um, if you've followed me for a while, you've known that I've had an X5, I've had an X5M, I've had an X6M, um, and so I'm no stranger to SUVs, but I'm, big question I really am asking myself, is this the right thing for me now and why? It's got some cool factors, right? So let's just talk about them on the outside. First of all, the one thing that distinguishes this car are the gullwing doors, and I'll put those up in just a minute for you, right? That's the distinctive uh, thing. It is quite a substantial car, right? It's got this spoiler at the back, which is kind of nice. You can raise it and lower it. Um, but the big question is, is it necessary for what I need. Now I'm going to walk around. I love the lights, by the way. It does look kind of aggressive. It's Falcon-esque, those LED lights. Uh, and I like the, the new uh, shape. This is essentially an updated version of the Model S, if you ask me. Okay, so as you know, most of the cars today have a credit card, size key as their key, but you can actually option and get the fob. In this case, with a fob in my pocket, if I walk up to the car, look at what happens automatically. It unlocks, and then, as I walk to the door, that's weird, the door should pop open. It's not popping open this time for some reason. We're gonna try it again, but what you see about this car, it's a more traditional layout with a dashboard in front of you and a center console, one of the most giant center consoles there are. And that's what makes it unique, right? That's distinctive about Teslas, is this giant console. But it's a more traditional layout, which has lots of information in the center here. But if you remember to the video I, I shot and posted um, recently about the Model 3, the one thing that you clearly notice, right, is how amazing the visibility is on the Model 3. And it's not terrible on this car. But I must say that because it's a traditional layout, you kind of miss, you kind of lose a little bit of the thing that makes it go, make you go, wow, it's airy. It's, it's got this roomy feel. And maybe it's because of the darker interior as well. Remember the Model 3 I drove was a um, white interior, which made the car just so bright. 
But the big question is, again, is this the right car for me? So we're gonna take it for a spin, and we're going to talk about my initial impressions of the driving dynamics, how it makes you feel, and the looks is kind of okay. Actually, I don't mind it. What's amazing from the outside, though, you see this windshield. There is the door now opening as I approach. You can see this entire the windshield and the roof is one up until you get to the Falcon doors. And then what happens? You have a split roof. And so we're going to stand in the back and you're going to be able to take a look at that. Door is closing on its own. And now let's see if it works this time. I'm going to walk up again and see if it actually will unlock. Come on, do it. Nope, I guess the windows have to lock and then it will unlock. So we'll try, g give it a second and we'll do it again. Okay guys, now we are in the Tesla Model X and we're gonna go take it for a drive. Put our seat belt on and down your eyes and here we go. Now, one of the things immediately, as I said earlier that you notice, is one, the command seating position that you're in, which is absolutely superb for an SUV. Um, but I will say that immediately, this car feels like a conventional SUV. It is big. Oh my God, this thing is bulky, but it moves. It is not as agile. Yeah, it, it's not as, you could feel the weight going around this corner. It is not, like the Model 3 that is so much smaller than this. This is a two-ton vehicle. And yeah, it's heavy. And you can feel it as you go into the corners. But it's actually a comfortable ride. But you can see that this is feels, see it and that it feels very much like a conventional car. You have a dash in front of you um, and you don't really see the corners of the edge of the car as well as you do in the Model 3. I can say that. Um, so it's a bit bulkier. It doesn't feel, it's roomy, but it doesn't give you that feel that it's roomy um, or as roomy. Maybe it's because of the dark or black interior. And I will also say this, that there's still nothing like this windshield. I'm just blown away by it. I feel like I'm in a jet fighter uh, because literally it's over your head, past your head. And it's kind of cool, actually. It is a really cool feeling. Um, so it does feel like you're literally in a bubble, but it's, it's, a, it's a pretty big, it's a big vehicle. And even with full self-driving, that I'd probably option into this car or this SUV, I think it still would be, maybe it's too big for my need. I think if you have got a family, I think if you have a family, um, this would be perfect um, and you need that. But I'm not so sure that I need something, honestly, this big. I, I'm going to go off-road here a little bit and sort of turn around. Let me see if I can get a really good picture of this with the sun in the back. So give me one second here. I got to catch this picture. All right, so we're off. Let's continue the drive here, guys. I'll put my seatbelt on. Safety first. And we're off again. It's interesting, it's telling me there's a software update. We're not gonna install that now, we'll do it later. Um, so things, uh, driving dynamics, because yeah, again, that's the first thing I'm interested in. And what's actually notice on the uh, dash here, it doesn't show me pedestrians as much as the Model 3 did, and maybe it's just a software version that's on here. Um, but I kinda like in the dash that you have in front of you, all this information. It's more traditional, more conventional. What I also notice is that the regenerative braking, and maybe there's a setting in the system here, I'm sure there is, um, that I can adjust, but it, it doesn't, it's not as aggressive as the three, and I know you can make those adjustments in the software. 
in the menus, but um, it's interesting. I just don't think there is as much of a, I don't think there is as much of regenerative braking going on here. And we're sort of to, starting to lose a little bit of light here. Um, but again, if you are so used and you want something close to a traditional car SUV, this is the one to go for, because the setup is just very much traditional. I think you can't beat the crazy doors though. The, interestingly enough, looking at the time, I guess the dashboard um, just went into night mode. So kind of interesting. Um, so what my, is my impression? Big, it's bulky, probably more bulky than I need for a daily driver. Um, so I'm not so sure that the Model X is the right daily driver for me because I also have to think about, you know, uh, parking this thing uh, and operating it. And I'm not so sure that this quite makes sense for me. Um, based, given the use case that I've told you, tell me guys what you think. What, um, uh, would you daily drive a Model X? Just, again, going back and forth 150 miles. Um, or would you go for the one in between, the SUV in between, which is the Model Y, or the Model 3? Now, in this series, I probably will not review the Model S because the Model S is way too traditional a uh, sedan. Um, it doesn't give me the utility that I may want occasionally. Um, and it's too much of a traditional setup, just like this car um, or this SUV. So I'm probably not going to drive that. Um, another option that's on the list, obviously, is the Porsche Taycan, probably do the Turbo S. Um, and that's uh, on the list. So I'm looking for something electric, something fun. I love technology, and that's why I'm in the, the Tesla Model S. And so I want to hear from you guys. If there are any other choices out there that I should be looking at. Now, having said that, I don't have a ton of time to look at um, you know, 50 different cars. And I know there are tons of really fun vehicles that are out there. But again, I'm looking at long haul, boring ride daily. And so I'm looking for something that's gonna be fun. Having said that, we're kind of in the midst of, you know, crazy time. So I don't wanna go and visit 20 different dealerships. Um, it's not the sort of thing, and I'm not gonna build this series like some YouTubers will do and, and so I'm getting this, I'm getting this, I'm getting, and that's not what this is about. I literally am looking for my next daily driver because I'm going to retire the i8, I'm going to keep it. There's something very special about that car. Still only has about 25, 26,000 miles. Um, so it's gonna stay in the garage. It's gonna stay as a part of the permanent collection at this point. Like it's big brother, the V10 uh, M6. So. I need your help to kind of find the next one. And I'm really looking for some suggestions because um, I got to make it happen. So with that, guys, I want to thank you so much for stopping in and checking out this video. Um, the hunt continues and hopefully we can find this pretty, this one pretty soon because I really need to get there. I really need to. Uh, I don't want to put 150 miles a day on the i8. Could easily do it, but I want to keep that car. There's still nothing like it on the road. It's got plenty of torque, probably underpowered. It is an exotic, but it's not a supercar by any means. So on that note, we are going to call it a day. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not following me, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, turn notification on, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. And on that note, we'll see you guys next video. Peace, be safe, and keep motoring.